Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone. A big, warm welcome wherever you are in the world. This is USA Global TV and Radio. We provide world-class education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. Thank you to all of our loyal viewers and listeners around the world. And welcome to our new audiences on Roku Worldwide, Amazon Fire, and soon to be Apple TV. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Elegance, Polished Demeanor, and Posh Living, where the star of our show is the vivacious, the beautiful Zane Carson Carruth. Zane is a certified etiquette and protocol professional. Zane is also an award-winning international author, and Zane is a very dear friend. Let's welcome Zane to the program. Hello, how are you? I'm just fine. I'm happy to be here. And it's great to see you and happy belated birthday yesterday. You had a wonderful birthday, it looked like. Yes, I did. I'm super blessed and lucky. Thank you. And, and thank you for all of your well wishes. Zane, I'm super excited about this show because we have a topic that I think is truly relevant for everyone to become aware of and understand the impacts towards our health. But before we bring out our guest, Dallas Jones, tell us a little bit about the work that you are doing. I know you have a new book that's coming out. Yes, I do. I do have a new book up coming out and it's based on a true story on my own horse. That's my boxer. The name of the book is Abella and the Almost Racehorse because he's just not quite a racehorse because he got an abscess tooth. So it's a cute little story. And like I said, it's based on a true story. So you'll learn a lot about my horse, but I'm excited for it to come out. It'll probably be another three weeks before it hits the pavement, but uh, but it's done. It's finished. But thank you for asking about it. Thank you so much, Zane. Would you please do the honors of introducing our guest, Dallas Jones? Certainly. Dallas Jones is the nationally renowned radon expert and vice president of Ecosense, a radon monitoring company. He's a leader in the industry for radon monitoring. 
Uh, welcome, Dallas. We're thrilled to have you here. There's a lot of misinformation about radon and radon testing and who needs to have it. And um, we are really looking forward to learning about your, your product here. Welcome, Thank you. Dallas. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Dallas. Where are you joining us from today? I am in Atlanta, Georgia. Fantastic. Well, it's a pleasure to have you with such a topic that is really important. Zane and I were chatting just briefly backstage, and I don't have a lot of knowledge about radon. I know, Zane, you've done a lot of research. Tell us about radon. What is it and why is it important that we know about it? Well, radon is a radioactive gas that comes from the decay of radium, uh, which comes from the decay of uranium. And there's some radium in most soils and rocks. And um, it, since it's a gas, it can travel through the soil. And our houses um, are not sealed to the soil, no matter how much we think they are. And um, um, because of a pressure difference between the house and the soil, radon gas is literally drawn, along with other soil gases, uh, into buildings. And um, the fact that it's radioactive and produces a big alpha particle that um, uh, once it decays and becomes little radioactive particles, stick to the lungs. And um, that radiation has been demonstrated uh, repeatedly for quite a long time to increase the risk of lung cancer. In fact, radon exposure is the leading cause of lung cancer in people who don't smoke, uh, the second leading cause overall. You know, wow. that's fascinating because I was talking to my husband about the program today and he goes, oh, OK, radon. What, what is that? I said, oh, I don't know. I think it has something to do with boilers, you know, because <laughs> Texas is not one of the required states to have radon testing when you buy a home. But New York is. And we had to have radon testing. So I erroneously uh, just drew the conclusion that it had something to do with a boiler. But it doesn't. Radon is everything which just shocked me what I mean what you just said is um that's eye-opening for everybody nationwide worldwide well radon has been found uh in elevated levels in every state in the in the union it's found all over the world uh the world health organization uh is heavily involved in in um uh, helping to uh, promote policy in, in uh, different countries uh, the issue has always been that it's naturally occurring and uh, because there's no um, manufacturer uh, with deep pockets to blame, uh, then uh, there haven't been uh, lawsuits uh, to help uh, raise awareness. Um, um, it, uh, its presence in the soil uh, is natural and it usually just comes out of the ground and into the atmosphere and, and dilutes rapidly. But um, when it's drawn into a home, it can build up to dangerous levels. And when we breathe those over time, um, it greatly increases the risk of lung cancer. We're seeing um, some new studies even uh, where they haven't uh, proven definitively, but uh, quite a number of studies that uh, are indicating that uh, it may have a link to leukemia as well. Oh, my gosh. Dallas, thanks for sharing that. You know, I have several family members who did not smoke and passed away from lung cancer. And maybe this is one of those. Uh, there's a tie in there. Is there any smell to radon? If we don't have some way to detect it, can we can we smell it? Can we see it? Can we without a device? Is it possible? Well, the the other reason that it hasn't become more. Um, um, oh, infamous, I guess, is, or more uh, gotten more notoriety is that uh, it is colorless. It's odorless. It's tasteless. Um, we can't really detect its presence um, without uh, something that can measure the, the radioactivity. Um, so because we can't really sense it, uh, it's easy to dismiss. Uh, the other factor is uh, unlike uh, carbon monoxide, which can kill you um, overnight uh, in your sleep if you're exposed to enough, uh, this isn't a, an acute risk. It's something that uh, takes some time to develop. 
But if you've uh, ever known or been with someone who's suffering from lung cancer, you know it's it's not a uh, a pleasant way to to leave this world. And uh, lung cancer is the most prominent of all cancers, and um, uh, that also has not gotten uh, quite the attention. Uh, because of its association with smoking. And so people seem to think that, um, well, if you have lung cancer, then you had it coming. You should have known better than to smoke cigarettes. Um, but as you mentioned, there are more and more people uh, being diagnosed um, with uh, lung cancer who never smoked uh, and at younger ages all the time. Thank you. Wow. Well, that is very interesting. Okay. Say are there now y'all y'all sell machines that can monitor this for your homes right and businesses and schools and Correct. how effective are they well the the reason i became a part of ecosense is because our radon sensor is so phenomenal that i, I just wanted to be a part of the company um it has been uh traditionally uh too expensive to have the kind of um uh, sensor technology that that we have. Uh, professionals uh, who do testing, perhaps in real estate transactions um, or uh, for you know, nuclear power plants and other applications uh, would have the uh, the means to, you know, to, to purchase a traditional um, radon monitor. It wasn't until uh, our sensor uh, became available and, and we began to produce um, our uh, product line that uh, homeowners could have uh, the same detection technology. In fact, it's better than a lot of the professional devices um, at a very affordable price. Um, and so we're able to provide a, a little monitor that you can put in your home and, and not only take a, a short uh, two or three day test, you can monitor the radon concentrations um, from one hour to the next, from uh, day to day, week to week, month to month. Uh, year to year. And, and that's important because radon concentrations are changing all the time. Um, it's, there's a relationship between the building and the soil below uh, based on, on pressure. Um, differential pressure, uh, I guess the best way, the simplest way to think about that is warm air rises and, and we have air that's coming up um, to the attic and out uh, the top of the house and that pulls uh, replacement air from below. And uh, that's called the stack effect. Um, as uh, that air leaves at the top and and uh, replacement air comes in from below, a portion of that replacement air is coming from the soil. And uh, that's uh, uh, the source of, uh, of the radon. And uh, that relationship, that pressure relationship will change depending on the weather, depending on the time of year, whether you're running your um, heat or your air conditioning, uh, all those things cause that radon uh, concentration indoors to, to move up and down. So being able to take a look at it for a long period um, gives you a, a, a really good uh, idea of what your exposure is. It also helps you determine what are the things uh, perhaps in your building operation um, you know, when you're uh, when you're cooking and running exhaust fans, when you're running the heat or the air conditioning uh, and other activities, uh, what causes the radon to, to rise and, and what may cause it to go down? Thank you, Dallas. I appreciate that. What I'm wondering is once radon is detected, what is the next step that we need to take? Well, that's a great question. The good news is is, is radon uh, concentrations can be uh, reduced um, by a qualified uh, mitigation contractor. Uh, it's really not complicated. Uh, what they do is they 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 reverse that airflow. So they they use a um, a PVC pipe that they insert uh, in the in the slab. And uh, or if it's a crawl space house like uh, you have in a lot of the country, uh, they'll put a membrane down over the dirt and then they'll uh, pull air with this PVC pipe and an inline fan. They'll draw air out from underneath the membrane or the concrete slab and uh, run that pipe up uh, either through a chase inside the house or outside the house in a in a uh, location that uh, you don't really notice and uh, it exhausts the radon to the outdoors um, but uh, the 
uh, the, the, the real way it works is it's just creating a lower pressure in the, in the ground than there is in the, in the house. So any place that you just can't physically get to to seal, uh, the airflow is going the other way. Um, it'll cause the air to go down rather than from the ground in. And, and that has some advantages in, in, um, in, in other ways, too. You keep other um, pollutants and, and uh, soil gases from coming in. And um, if you live in a, in a humid environment, then you uh, can reduce the moisture inside as well because that damp air uh, can no longer uh, be drawn into the house. Excellent information. Thank you, Zane. Well, yeah, how many of those monitors do you have to have in your house? Is one enough or do you have to have one upstairs, one downstairs, or how many square feet do you need? I mean, how well, many that, units per square feet do you need? Well, typically you'll want to test in the lowest, um, uh, a room that you occupy a lot on the lowest level of the house. There's a, okay. there's a myth also out there that, you know, radon is something that occurs in homes with basements. And if you live in a home over a crawl space or that slab on grade, that radon really isn't a concern at all. Um, that's not true. Uh, the house is still connected to the soil and, and, and the soil gases can be drawn in. Uh, but if you test in that lowest level, um, that's where the concentrations will tend to be the highest because as the uh, air moves up further in the house, there's, there's more volume of air for dilution. Uh, so it'll dilute into the larger volume as you move to the floor above and, and, and so forth. So uh, test in that lowest level. Um, now, if you if you have a complicated house where perhaps you have a, a basement and 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 maybe uh, to the side of that is an area over a crawl space uh, or maybe a slab addition, uh, then you would like to test in in that basement area, uh, particularly if you spend time there um, in a room over the crawl space and in a room over the slab. So you would like to test in in all three areas because it could be different um, in in those locations. Okay, so your unit, can you just unplug it and take it to another room or do you? Yes, oh, you well, can. Makes... Yes, you that can. We have a lot easy. of people who do that. They'll test for, um, um, you know, weeks in a certain location and, and get an idea there and then they'll move it to a different location. Um, they're affordable enough that we have some uh, customers that decide they just want to keep an eye on it uh, with, with, uh, by buying extra units and putting them in, in uh, you know, more than one location. Uh, it's not necessary, but it, you can, because you can move it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, and say you do, like, like Dr. Jacqueline said, you do find you have radon. Now, how is it easy is it to find these mitigation companies? What are they even called? Well, there, if you look in uh, Google and, and, and uh, search for radon mitigation uh, company, then you'll find a lot of them. They're, they're, uh, I was the executive director of the um, uh, Radon uh, Association for, for Professionals, and, and uh, that program also has a, a certification uh, body uh, that uh, certifies radon testers and mitigators. Um, to, that can demonstrate uh, that they have taken the necessary training and can pass an exam to, uh, to do that kind of work. Uh, some states have licensing programs uh, that require that certification or um, their own um, uh, licensing requirements, uh, depending on the state. Um, uh, I, you, you mentioned to me earlier that you're in Texas, and, and uh, there's, a, there's a myth that Texas doesn't have uh, um, radon. Uh, that's uh, kind of um, helped by the fact that uh, as long as people don't test, then they don't find elevated radon. Uh, what has changed that viewpoint a little bit in the last um, few years is uh, the Department of Housing and Urban Development requires radon testing, even in Texas, on a multifamily property. So uh, if they're getting financed, uh, either refinanced or, or purchased, then they have to go through testing in the multifamily properties. And there are a lot of multifamily properties in Texas, like everywhere. And so they're doing testing in Texas and finding that, uh, uh, lo and behold, there's elevated red on there too. Um, so um, it, it, as I mentioned, you can find elevated concentrations in buildings and homes in every state. 
Dallas, thank you. What I'm wondering is during the pandemic, obviously more people started working from home and many people probably still are working from home. And is it more likely we have more autonomy and the ability to take to be proactive and to take care of our health? So are you finding an increase in the number of purchases from homeowners as opposed to before the pandemic? Absolutely. As people uh, began to uh, spend time at home working, uh, they became more aware of their surroundings. I, I, perhaps there's a, a false sense of security when you're working in the office that, you know, somebody's managing that and you don't think about it so much. But uh, when you're at home, uh, you, you know for sure that you're responsible, uh, and perhaps unless you're renting. And, and um, uh taking that responsibility and looking around, you realize, well, perhaps I should test. And uh, uh, we have seen a, a marked uh, increase in, in sales as a result of people uh, working from home because they want to make sure that the place that they're spending time, which is often uh, an office in the lowest level, um, is uh, monitored and, and uh, mitigated if, if need be. Excellent. Thank you. That's an excellent question, Dr. Jacqueline, because I'm just curious, how educated is the general public about radon? Because like I said, I was way off base and my husband was, and he usually knows everything. But um, so are we in the minority or are we just? Uh... No, no, I, I would say you're not the minority there. Uh, as I mentioned, it's easy to ignore. So um uh, I talk to people um, uh, regularly uh, who uh, say, well, yeah, I think I had a radon test when I bought my home and uh, everything was fine. Um, and, and they don't really recall it very well. They don't really uh, remember uh, what the concentration was. They don't realize that radon concentrations can change uh, not only from you know, from the time of year or the weather or house operation, but also because of things you do to your home. You could uh, you could um, uh, finish out a, a basement and change uh, things as a result of of uh, remodeling. You could uh, put an addition on the home. You could uh, change the heating and air conditioning system. Uh, there could be um, construction nearby where they're um, uh, they're uh, using explosives for uh, you know uh, trying to get some rock and uh, earth out of the way um, all these things earthquakes uh, change the um, the the uh, airspace in the soil and and the pathways for radon to move um, if you don't keep an eye on it then you're you're certainly uh, subject to um, uh, the possibility that it could change. I, my own house is uh, an example. I've been doing radon work for 35 years plus, and uh, I've tested my own home uh, that I've lived in for the last 25 years uh, multiple times and, and never um, had an elevated concentration uh, until recently. I, I had some monitors running here. Um, I was um, uh, demoing and doing some uh, R&D work with, and and I discovered uh, uh, that I was getting some concentrations that I'd never seen before, and I was trying to figure out, well, what has happened? And uh, what happened is I had my heating and air conditioning replaced, and when they when they did that, it's on the lowest level of the home. Um, they actually didn't didn't seal up the the ductwork very well, and so the return that draws the air back to the to the air handler uh, is sucking air from the from the room uh, that it's in, and uh, so that's creating a lower lower pressure that's pulling more soil gas in, and then it's bringing it upstairs. Um, once I realized that, I I I had to take measures to uh, to mitigate. Thank you, Dallas. I'm wondering, is there any correlation between the age of a home and the likelihood of the presence of radon? So if we buy an older home, more likely new construction? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a, a, another good question. Um, people often think that they if they have a new home, then they shouldn't be worried. Uh, so a couple of things to to consider. Uh, EPA estimates about 21,000 Americans die of radon-induced lung cancer annually. 
And that number hasn't been changing a lot because we're building new homes with elevated concentrations as fast as we're mitigating existing ones. Uh, so, um, yes, new homes can have elevated concentrations. One of the things that builders are doing in, in a lot of areas of the country is they're putting in uh, what was originally called radon resistant construction features. Um, that's not a very good name because what it really does is just make the, the home uh, easier and, and more affordable to fix uh, should it have a, a radon problem. So they make sure that they have a, um, a lot of uh, aggregate stone underneath the, the, the concrete uh, slab um, and a way to uh, attach a pipe uh, to uh, that gravel base that, that's underneath the slab. And uh, if the home gets tested, then they, all they need to do if, it's, if the concentrations are elevated is put a fan in line and activate the system. Uh, unfortunately, it gets marketed by the builders uh, who are also often ignorant um, about the, uh, the necessity uh, for testing uh, that the, they've taken measures to uh, address radon. And so people don't test when they purchase the home um, and perhaps it's only when they go to sell it again that uh, they realize, wow, I've been living in elevated concentrations. I thought I had um, radon measures taken when the home was built. Um, but uh, if the home doesn't get tested, then that, that system can't get activated uh, to do the job. Yeah, I would think that a cracked foundation would really increase your chance for radon. Well, cracked foundations, there's there's other penetrations that come through where plumbing pipes come up through the slab, uh, block wall uh, foundations, you know, are, are not airtight no matter what you try to do. Um, you know, the, the gas can find its way in. There's a, there's a, a perimeter crack where the slab uh, meets the, the foundation. Uh, there are just a lot of uh, places where um, a gas can find its way in, and because it wants to move in that direction, um, it does. Uh, you add that to uh, houses that have a, a crawl space area, with a, particularly with a dirt floor crawl space. Um, in, in some of the country, they around where I live, for example, in crawl space houses, they built uh, uh, not too many years ago. They were putting the air handler, the the the, the, the furnace in the crawl space, and so now you've got this this damp, um, often um, uh, moldy crawl space with a lot of humidity, uh, soil gas coming up, and it's all being sucked uh, up through the floor uh, into the living space. Uh, so. Um, it's it's important uh, to take a look at that. I think we've been ignoring um, our uh, um, our home environment um, and its relationship to our our health. We think we think about asthma because it it makes uh, us or our children uh, cough and wheeze, and and so we have these symptoms, and and we want to go um, you know do something about it. The the problem with lung cancer is the symptoms don't show up until it's too late. Um, stage four is typically when people find uh, that they have lung cancer. And at that point, it's already metastasized to other parts of the body. Um, I, I'll, I'll share very quickly. I, I got a phone call coming out of uh, um, an airport uh, uh, not too many months ago from a, uh, a fairly young man in Park City, Utah, uh, who um, uh, wanted to tell me, uh, his, my number got referred to him uh, by, by someone, how much he appreciated our, our little monitors and, and how they track the radon concentration and how important it was to him because he had been diagnosed uh, this summer with stage four lung cancer. He's in his uh, early to mid 40s. I've never smoked a cigarette. Uh, he lives in Park City because he loves to ski and mountain bike. He's a, he always been very uh, active and athletic. And um, uh, he was uh, puzzled you know, right away. How could I get lung cancer? And that's the question that I hear all too often. And uh, after he tested his home and um, he realized he'd been living in high radon there, uh, he doesn't know, you know, how many other uh, uh, homes he lived in that had elevated concentrations. Um, at that point, it's too late um, uh, to prevent it. But uh, it, it's a very preventable disease. If you're aware, you test 
and you uh, reduce the concentrations if necessary. Thank you, Dallas. We're coming to the end of the show. And one question that I have for you is that your monitors are built with a certain patented technology. I think it's ion chamber technology. And I'm wondering how often does that technology, just like phones, for example, they're constantly changing. So how often do you come out with new versions of the monitors or once it's there, it's really you don't need to have any upgrades or any patches or anything else? Well, the, the sensor technology um, that we have is what has made this so uh, affordable for homeowners to have now. Um, it's a very um, <laughs> sensitive uh, detector, meaning that you can accurately uh, measure the concentrations at short intervals uh, from one hour to the next to the next, which helps you track and see what's going on. Uh, our updates are typically with other features to make it um, um, more user friendly. Um, we already have uh, trend charts where you can, you know, you can graph and, 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 you know, look at your phone app, for example, and see how it, uh, how the radon concentration moves and then go in and get your average for the day, week, month and year. Um, you know, the, the, the health risk is based on uh, exposure over time, but being able to, to look at that. Um, you know, keeps you aware. And, and uh, you know, I always, well, one of our products is called a radon eye. And, and I think that's appropriate because not only are we able to see the radon, uh, it's important to keep uh, your eye on uh, what the concentrations are. Uh, so I, I guess to answer your question, we're, we're really not uh, changing the sensor technology, but we're coming out with different applications um and um uh, technology to make it more uh, user friendly fantastic thank you so much for that uh, for those who are listening on an audio only platform we have pulled up ecosense's website and i'd love to have you just walk us through dallas the important information here for consumers as well as businesses you've got a number of solutions here well, we have a um, a, a, um, a section for uh, uh, consumers, uh, a section for business products. So you can you can hit the menu and and scroll through and see the products that are designed for homeowners and the ones that are designed for professionals. Uh, we have a referral club, uh, which uh, is, is something that uh, you can join and and you, you'll make a, a little commission if you'd like to. Uh, you know, sell the, or, or refer our monitors to your friends and family. Um, uh, the one you're looking at right there is one that doesn't need to be connected to anything other than just plugged in the wall. It has a, a display on the front that uh, will show the concentration for uh, the hour um, at, at that point in time. And then there's a little button on the back and you can press it and it'll show you what the average was for the day. Press it again, uh, it'll show you for the week and then again for the month and the year. So it doesn't give you uh, a record, uh, but it's simple. It doesn't need to be connected to Wi-Fi or, or Bluetooth. Um, if you scroll down just a little more, the EcoCube is is probably my favorite because it um, it's a little keep you put it on your Wi-Fi and then you have a phone app. And uh, so all the data, all the hourly data, uh, daily averages, um, weekly and monthly are kept on the on the cloud. And um, you can look at it at any time on your phone uh, from anywhere. So you could even, um, as long as it's connected to Wi-Fi, you can see what the radon concentration is. Um, uh, as long as you can, um, you know, get to get on Wi-Fi from your phone, and uh, it'll show you the uh, the trend charts, uh, how the radon's moving up and down, as well as the averages for the different time periods. Um, and uh, it's an amazing monitor. We have professionals that are using a professional version of this monitor for long-term um, uh, uh, monitoring for um, uh, mitigation systems. If you have a mitigation system, it's really important that if you're, if you're not having it professionally monitored, that you, you monitor it yourself with a device uh, like this or, or the one we just showed. And let's also mention to our audio only audience that there's a special promotion going on right now that you can save 10%. And the promo code is the letter E, capital E dash spring home, all capital letters, E dash 
spring home. Offer expires March 31st. Uh, this one is our right on the eye. It's our it's our uh, um, flagship uh, uh, detector that um, was the first one we came out with. Uh, this one doesn't need to be on Wi-Fi, uh, but you connect to it via Bluetooth, so you can't monitor the uh, the concentrations uh, from a distance. But as soon as you get close enough to connect uh, via Bluetooth, uh, then you can pull the data from it and and see it on your phone. It'll keep the the data. Um, uh, for in, until you delete it, uh, so it's a um, it's another uh, opportunity. I like the fact that it has there in plain sight. Action required. Do something. Well, he sold me. I'm ready to buy one. I'm ready to buy one as well. <laughs> so <laughs> I need one for my daughter. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, um, obviously lung cancer, I've I've witnessed it in family members. It is a horrible way to go. If you could spend less than two hundred dollars to have something like this, that's going to give you the information that you need. Uh, that's a no brainer as far as I'm concerned. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's a no brainer. And I'm so grateful to know about this because I've often wondered, like everybody else, how in the world do you get lung cancer if you don't smoke? But right. And, you, it, and it yeah. happens. It happens for yes. sure. Um, we seem to have lost Dallas, uh, Dallas's audio, but I just wanted to point out here that you can actually come down the page and you can compare the th three different products that he shared already and oh, make yeah. a decision about what's best for you. And of course, there's also opportunities to go on and find out about solutions for businesses, about the referral that uh, the referral club where you can earn a few dollars yourself. So thank you so much. We're going to stop sharing the screen for right now. And, uh, and we're back. Dallas, do you have your audio back? No. Okay. We're going to take Dallas off screen just temporarily while he figures out his sound. But if you would like to get in touch with Dallas, it's Dallas Jones, VP of EcoSense. And the website is ecosense.io. Zane, what are your key takeaways from today's show? Well, one, I'm thrilled to, to have learned that and that there's a solution. I mean, and it's and it's very cost effective. I mean, that's a good under 200 bucks to be able to monitor something like that. And you can just take it out and plug it in another room or take it upstairs or take it to your vacation home or whatever. Um, I think today has been a great show. Very informative and valuable. I think we learned some valuable information today. I, I think so too. I personally will be purchasing this monitor yes. and I know you're going to. So <laughs> I would just, yeah, I would advocate for people to think about it. What is your health worth, right? So we're not paid spokespersons for this and we're not medical doctors, but just from a human standpoint, make this investment in your health, your family's health and peace of mind. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. This is just a blessing that fell in our lap to have absolutely. get all this information. And it's so easy. And I expected this system to be a couple of thousand dollars, but man, anyway, I'm, I'm getting one, maybe two. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> Zane, as we close out this show, I'm going to spotlight you. What is the value you can bring to our audience and how can they reach out to you? Well, um, you can reach out to me at zanecaruth.com. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, if you have something to share, something, you know, like this, something that people really don't know about, but need to know about, or if you've got a new product or a book or anything, we'd love to have you on the show. Um, and if you'd like me to write an article about etiquette for your magazine or your newspaper, I'm happy to do that. Again, zanecaruth.com. Or if you have any questions or someone you'd like to see on the show or information you would like to get on the show, have have for us to have someone on, uh, we're happy to do that too. So just let us know. We are easy to work with. 
Thank you so much, Zane. Of course, we have your information here at the bottom of the screen. So we do ask people to go and reach out to you. They can find you on LinkedIn as well. So thank you so much for being here today. We want to thank Dallas. We're sorry that Dallas lost the audio, but that's okay, Dallas. We're purchasing your products and we're advocating for everyone else to do that as well. We're your spokespeople. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And Zane, we look forward to seeing you again next month. So thank you yes. and do take care. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone. Whether you're watching on the live or the replay, we truly do appreciate you. Please spread the word. Tell people about USA Global TV and radio as our sole mission is to bring education and awareness to people all across the world. As Zane mentioned, if you'd like to be a guest on this or any of our other shows, we have 42 different shows you can choose from. Please go to our website, usaglobaltv.com. Book your session. That's all for now. Thank you so much. This program has been brought to you in part by Zane Carson Carruth, etiquette and protocol expert, international award-winning author, television show host, and philanthropist. Thank you to Zane, our official diamond sponsor for USA Global TV and Radio in partnership with E360 TV. Zane is the author of the world's first tooth fairy ever, as well as many other children's books. She's also the television host of Elegance, Polished Demeanor, and Posh Living, seen on USA Global TV and Radio. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carruth, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademark series, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book, Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand. These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. To learn more about Zane, contact her through her website, zanecaruth.com. Z-A-N-E-C-A-R-R-U-T-H dot C-O-M. Order Zane's books and merchandise. Contact her about being a keynote speaker at your next event.